all flesh, in whose ever embrace all creatures live, in whatsoever world or condition they be. I beseech thee from for him whose name and dwelling place, and every need thou knowest. Lord, light and rest, and peace and refreshment, joy and consolation, in paradise and in companionship of the saints, in the presence of Christ, in ample folds of thy great love. It's a little sprat again. Poor creature. As pale as a fish's belly. And those eyes. He's only lost in the world, that's all. And what would you be in a strange land without a mother's touch? A drunkard. You're already that. Jim, wake up, will you? It's your daughter. How are you, girl? She's worn out, Jim. Open your eyes. She looks as if she's raised in a tin box. Fresh air. That's a ticket. A little sprat like her breathing the poison fumes that's the air in this town. You have to take her to the country. There's no work to be had at home. And we're never going back to the island. That's done. A lemon squash for you, dear. It isn't a place to be raising a girl around here. I do my best. You try, bless you. Why not send her off to her grandfather's place, then? You'd like that, wouldn't you, love? You'd like that, living with the old people. Later. Father had to put me on the morning boat. You climbed all this way up by yourself. It's great to see you. Your grandmother saw you below. She nearly had a fit. She knew it was me. With that head of hair, at double the distance, I'd know you were a Keneally. And your father and his brother the same. Oh, but for Jimmy, he's the only dark one. I'd better not mention anything about Jamie in front of Grandmother. She's getting the tea ready for you now. Oh, look at your arms, dear. Like sticks they are. Eat up now. I see here she's needing. 
sure I hear you can't find a proper hen's egg in that city. But the ones here is nothing compared to what was laid on the island. Ah, you and that island. That's true enough, though. Doesn't her own cow only give half the milk she gave in Roninish? Look, what's done is done, and there's no use moaning over it. Why did we have to leave? It was the young people, dear. Like your father and his brothers. They were restless on the island, and then came the war and jobs across the sea, and now as they have the taste of the city in their blood. Ah, uh, city indeed. Nothing but noise and dirt and people that's lost their senses. Couldn't tell the difference between a riptide and a raindrop if you shoved their face in the water. But you and Grandmother. Oh, no. We couldn't start up from naught, living alone on an island. There isn't a thing out there for us but sad memories. Can you see it from here? The sky is willing, some can. Look out there. Do you see a lighthouse on a long, flat island? I think I do. Then, beyond there to your right, a great island of dark hills. And there's a wee green bit of an island between them. She sees it, Tess. Ah, you put it into her head. She sees it. Only them that's born to the islands can see it from this distance. They say the east is our future and the west is our past. The island's to the west of us, Hugh. That's Roan Inish, girl. Island of the seals. And there's more of them now as the people have deserted. You've been out there? Once a week, if the current's right. God bless all here. Eamon, get in and sit for tea. You remember him, Fiona? Your cousin Eamon, Uncle Patrick's boy. Hello. So you've moved back to the west? Are you pleased? Oh, yes, I'm well pleased. How come you never left with your family? I tried it for a month, then I ran back here. I'm not clever enough to live in town. Too fast for me. Which as good a young fellow in a curl as ever I've seen. Oh, no. Love of the sea is a sickness. And you two will come to grief for it. Eat. She's seen Roan in Yemen on her first look. Is that so? Do you go there too? I've not set foot there since the evacuation. But Grandfather knows the shoals all about it. And what feeds there and when. You always come back with a full net. When the rest of them are scared to fish it. Why are they scared? Yemen. Oh. Tales is all. Tales of what? If it clears up this evening, you might see the light again. Light? There's an end on it. A lot of nonsense and superstition in my house. Here, come on, do your duty by those cakes, Eamon. They won't keep. Your grandfather's already filled his gullet. The sea gives, and the sea takes away. This is my father's father's father now. Keneally man. When he was only a few years older than you are now. His name was Sean Wakin. Smart boy, dark haired, bit of the rebel in him. Though times weren't as hard on the island as they were on the mainland, it's never easy pulling a living from the sea. The English were still a force in the country then. They had the schools, and it was their language and their ways that you had to learn there, or else. I see. There was a new schoolmaster in the school one year, as stiff as a cat's whiskers he was. And Sean Wykel wasn't a week in his class before he put the singulum about his neck. It was a punishment of those days for speaking Irish within his earshot. Sean Wykel stuck it for as long as he could where he had a strength of character. But the shame was too great, and he tore it from his neck, and he went for the schoolmaster and began to beat on the man, crying out, Ni mishit the asla an thee galdaf! Hai sus the hone! Hugh, please. It's a little girl. You don't understand. 
Be a girl. I don't have any Irish. More's the pity of it. Aye. Now, Sean Michael's father had great hopes for the boy, clever as he was, that he would learn to read the Englishman's language and study his laws and grow to be a leader for his people. But there was his son, knuckles bloody, anger in his heart, standing before him. You'll need to kill me to make me go back, he says. His father sighed then and looked out at the sea beyond them. You'll have nothing now, he said, but the black rocks and the wild waves and the hard sky above you. And wasn't it his first right trip out with his father that a fierce storm from the north blew over them? Sean Wakel, his father, his brothers, his uncles and his cousins, four boats in all, and it took them in its terrible grip and lifted them high and turned them over and slapped them back down into the boiling black sea with the scraps of their curls around them. His father caught in their net and dragged below without a whisper. Out as far as they were in the northern storm, an experienced fisherman will swallow his draught of water and swim to the bottom. For to fight the cold sea is only to prolong your suffering. But John Michael was green with it. And he flailed and he cried out and he beat the water with his legs and arms till the sea grew to hate him and refused to swallow him up. It was a full days later when people gathered muscles in the strand found him. And there was some was even afraid to touch him. But it was women mostly, soft-hearted as they are. The boy was more dead than alive, cold as ice to the touch, and there wasn't a fire in Ireland could bring the blood of life back into him. This is the time when the country people still lived with their beasts inside, and the woman as owned the house they brought him to said, here, bind him up to my cow. And then she brought another alongside, and their heat went out through him. And soon he began to shiver, and then he began to shake, and then he slept like a Christian for hours and hours. When he started to sweat, the woman cut him loose from her animals, and they bathed him, and wrapped him in blankets warmed in the heart. faces above him, all women and girls. Is this heaven then, he said. No, lad, said the woman of the house. It's only Chat Din. Now, Chat Din is the islands where the people thought that the souls of all Ireland's dead were held to rest. And so, Sean Michael believed he had drowned and come to the hereafter. It was a seal that brought me here, he told them. I was sinking under, destroyed by the effort of keeping my head above the swell. And a body, warm body, came under me and lifted me up. It was a seal from the field of its side, a great dark seal that bore me along through the storm and I hugging its neck. That's all I remember till I woke to you faces above me. And now, with his father and brothers and uncles and cousins all gone. There's only Sean Michael left to keep the Canelis alive in these islands. And you were saved by a seal? And two cows. And a woman has had her wits about her. It's a wonderful story. There's some think so. And there's some say they should never save a drowning man. What the sea will take, the sea must have. That's a lot of foolishness, Hugh. It's said that some that are saved turned wicked afterwards. What happened to Sean Michael, your great-grandfather? 
jailed by the English. Died in prison, a man of 50. Smuggling arms to the Fenians, he was. Oh, that's enough for now. Take the child to bed, Hugh. She's exhausted. <sighs> Sweet dreams, dear. Superstitious old man. Make this fire as the pure Christ reeks us all. Mary at the foot and Bridget at the head. And may the eight brightest angels from the city of grace preserve this house and all its people till the coming of the day. Out into the sun with you now. You'll find him below on the strand. Just follow the path across. Wishing I had someone to lend me a hand. It'd be great help to me. If you just kept stirring the tar in this bucket here. I love it. The olden times, people used cowhide on their cutters. And it was calico. Now we make do with canvas. The tar is what it always was. Last night. Light, is it? What light might that be? The one Aaron spoke of. A ruin in it. <laughs> There's plenty of things could be taken for a light in the dark. And no telling how far off they might be. You just want me to forget about Jimmy. Well, none of us forget him, dear. But life goes on. I can't even remember when we lost him. I was already off in the ship when it happened. It was a strange day. Everyone on the beach for the evacuation. The air was very still, like it is sometimes before a storm. It's like a dream that day. A slow, terrible dream that you watch. You can't stop it. All the people had rowed out and most of the goods. There's only your father and brother ashore. And 
wee Jamie. Sleeping in his cradle. In his cradle? Aye. Pulled up on the beach. Jamie, he called. We're coming by. I don't know how the cradle could have made up so much speed. The sea had taken him. Poor wee Jamie. Just was angry with us for leaving Rowan Inish. Mind that tar, love, or it'll be stiffer than an old man in a winter's night. He could still be out there. Jamie, alive. And cows could have wings, dear. Cows could have wings. You 
see this? It's a seal rent it open. A terrible rascals for stealing fish. There's one staring at me from the rock when I come in. Maybe he's fell in love. Got to be careful though. There's one day a year, all the seals gather to choose their new king. And it said, whichever of the island girls he fancies most is taken below to live as his queen. That's just stories. Some stories is true though. Grandfather told me about Jimmy. About when he was taken. Did he tell you the rumours? By what? Just then we claim to have seen him. Little Jamie, sailing the seas in his cradle boat. What do they say he looks like? They say he's grown into a fine little gossip. Sitting in the stern of his cradle like a captain in his ship. Always there's creatures about him. Seals swimming in the water. Great crowd of seagulls squawking overhead. If you call out or try to come closer, he vanishes. Great splashing the water and flapping the wings. Like a phantom, they say. Where do they see him? Coming back from the far side of the island. Close to Rowan Inch. Grandfather! Shh! And I told you nothing. What is it? Can I go out with you sometimes? In your boat? It'll be a few days before the tide is dried. Then will you? Well, I have to ask your grandmother first. She won't have you out on a boat. Mr. the day is fine. See something. See that little fellow there? It's his first year at sea. He's the one. He's the one that stared at me from the boat coming over. I'm sure he is. He was the one I saw. He really did remember me. Hide your face then. We'll be after taking you for a wife. Don't scare the child. Fiona's never scared. Are you, girl? His name is Jax. And how do you know that? It just is, that's all. There it is. Going in it? Aye. Isn't it beautiful? Fiona. That was your house there at that end. Tess and I were next door. And ours was one beyond. Right. We'll set those pots and we'll be back. Don't wander too far.
you could talk to me. Where do we go while the tide's still with us? Do you miss it greatly? Roll in it. That's only a place, I suppose. Most thing I miss is the way of life. It's surrounded by the sea. The whole family about you. I'm moving back. <laughs> when I'm a man. A sorry sight out there on your own. Haunting the island, all on your loads. Oh, no, I love a wife. Look at she have you, Eamon. Not many women these days see much romance and hard work and solitude. I'm moving back just the same. Remember the evening's best. We drop over. Your mother, God rest her, be laying out food. Father smoking, drying his feet by the fire. And then you, Fiona, will be Jamie, off at the corner with old pieces of dinnerware. Tea parties it was. You're always a great one for the tea parties. Someone's been in our old cottage. Vandals, is it? No. Someone is living there. Don't be daft. And I saw a footprint. The footprint of a little boy. Why didn't you show it to us then? We have destroyed it. Fiona, there's all sorts of things can look like a footprint in the shore. I saw it. I did. So you saw the island today? Yes. The houses are in a terrible state, I suppose. They weren't so bad with a little bit of cleaning. Yeah. If you're idle for a week, nature takes it back. There'll be birds nesting in the thatch and the chimney. Creepy, crawly things in every corner. It wasn't so bad. Our old cottage looked as if we left it a day ago. And there was sand and everything. Blowing off the beach. It was clean, though. And the mornings. And the mist on the water. We could move back. Grandfather said it's the best fishing. Oh, child, I couldn't think of it. I've only the picture in my mind of your poor little brother floating away. The only real tragedy in life is young people passing on before their time. I always remember his eyes. Dark they were. With a great soul behind them. Oh, he was here before. Jamie. Tess, don't start. Right. One and a quarter pounds to the green. You're a mean, penny-pinching creature, Flynn. Fiona, darling, you have your purse. Is this the granddaughter, then? It is. She isn't one of the dark ones, is she? Mind your own business, Flynn. You wait here, darling, while I go and fetch your grandfather. I could get him. 
I'll not have a young girl exposed to the layabouts to spend their days in that pub. You call this fresh, do you? You ought to be ashamed. She's the original tough customer. Old Tess. What dark ones? Hey? You said before that it wasn't a dark one. Haven't they told you? Told me what? Come along, then. There's an example for you. How could be your father's first cousin? Once in a generation, the Keneally spit out a dark one. Like my brother Jimmy? Aye. Tiger would be the one ahead of him. Will he know me? Uh, you can talk to me at the lake. But there's no saying if he'll talk back. He's a bit special, if you know what I mean. Father. I know you. You do? You're after something? I am. It's plain as day. Will I find it? I have no idea of the future. I can see the past quite well. And the present, if the weather's clear. Uh, leave off tight. You're frightening the wee girl. She's not easily frightened, this one. All right. Do you know why I'm dark? Because his brain's full of shoe polish and it's leaking. That's enough out of you. you. Easy take. The Keneally's first came to Rowan Inish. It was still only Irish spoken on the islands. They built their meager homes on the beach. And the seals and the birds moved aside to make room for them. There's only a few families and all related. So when it came time to find a mate, it was elsewhere you had to look. There was a boy among them, Liam, who always preferred to be alone. He set his own traps, built his own cara, and sat alone at all the family gatherings. One day, walking out around the outer islands, he saw a thing his eyes could scarce believe. In them days, seals was hunted for their oil and hides, clubbed to death and made into coats and pouches and pamputis for the feet. But Liam never took part in it, for he believed, as many did then, that there was no worse luck than to harm a seal. Liam had seen a selkie, a creature that's half human and half beast. Old stories told of such creatures luring ships onto the rocks and pulling sailors down into the drink. But all Liam knew was he'd never seen a woman so lovely in all his life. It was said that whoever could capture the hide of a selkie would have it in their power to command as they would. 
The Selkie maid had seen men before, fled from their fishing hooks and their spears and mattocks, but never had she seen one as glorious handsome as Liam Keneally. Islanders seen Liam row out to sea alone. And now all saw his return with the strange girl. Island people is a careful lot. Not likely to pass judgment on another person's business in public. But there was something so unearthly about the girl that soon set their tongues to wagging. There was much shaking of heads when Liam married the stranger. She hardly spoke at all, and when she did, her Irish was queer sounding. More ancient than their grandfather's grandfathers. And when they asked him where he'd found her, with her great dark eyes and her wild black hair, he'd only say Trabeg. Of course, this was nonsense, as it was only a speck in the ocean that even the seals had to leave when the tide was high. And she'd always be at the water, looking out at the seals and the birds. And she'd come back each day with her hands full of shellfish and seaweed, which she'd simmer over a driftwood fire in a manner all her own. But all had to admit that she was a good wife for their Liam. And before long, she was asking him to build a cradle for their firstborn. It must be made at the wood of a ship that sailed the ocean, she told him. And there'll be no need for rockers, for it will rock on the motion of the sea. It was the queerest looking thing. More of a ship than a cradle. And carved with shells and fish and seaweed. Whenever the day was calm, didn't they put the babe afloat on the water, rocking on the sea, with the ripple of the waves against the hull for a lullaby? Now the years passed, and Liam and Nula, for that's what the Selkie called herself, was happy in their work, and their love grew, and they had many children. With all that, there was always a touch of sadness about Nula. And she spent long hours looking out at that that she'd come from and listening to the cries of the seals on the outer islands. One of these afternoons, it was her eldest, who was called Fiona, said the words to her that changed it all. leather since Why does father hide a leather coat? Later that evening, as Liam was rowing home, he was followed by a solitary sea. It seemed joyous in its movements. It rolled and dived within the waves, joyous in the sleekness of its body. But its eyes, as with all its kind, the sadness as deep as the soul. When the seal left him at last, Liam felt a great emptiness inside, a fear, 
and he rode furious for the shore, even though the sea was heavy on his oars. When he got home, it was the faces of his children told him his fears were true. For once a selkie finds its skin again, neither chains of steel nor chains of love can keep her from the sea. From that day on, it was forbidden to harm a seal on the island. And man and beast lived side by side, sharing the wealth of the sea. And sometimes the Keneleys would see her out in the waves, basking in the sun on Trebeg, watching them, watching her children. And the cradle was passed down through the years with each new infant of the Keneleys rocked upon the waves within it. And every so often, there'd be one born with the dark eyes and the black hair that the Selkie had left in her blood. And these dark ones were most at home at sea. Great sailors and fisher folk, every one of them. Like Tiger, he's an admiral in the Royal Navy. Fiona, get out from there. Your grandfather's ready. Strange, maybe. He always has been. He was a sailor for a little while. Up to savage islands in the east. Places a Christian man it well to avoid. Did he upset you? Oh, no. He's very pleasant. Well, now you're not to mind anything he says to you. Poor fellow doesn't know if he's wide awake or dreaming. Your grandfather and I have to go over to Killy Beggs tomorrow to deal with the landlord. Would you like to come? Or maybe go to the Eamon. He has to deliver passes for the postman out among the smaller islands. I'd like to go with him. Well, if the weather holds and you dress warm. He's a troubled soul, Ty Keneally. It's as if he's caught between earth and water. Just four fingers above the horizon. You'll be ready and waiting. I promise. And if the weather turns foul? I'll go into the cottage and wait for you. I promise. And you remember where there's water? I do. If any harm comes to you, they'll have me head. I'll be careful. All right, then.
on time. Saw him today. Saw who? Jimmy. Sure you did. I did. I went into the cottage and made a fire and fell asleep and drowned with a sucky woman. And when I woke, I climbed to the top of the island and I saw that seal. The little one that's been watching me. And then I was walking and he was there. Jimmy, picking flowers. But he ran from me. Before I could reach him, he was gone. Gone where? In his cradle. He sailed away around the rocks. Just talk of spirits out here, you know. He wasn't a spirit. He's a little boy. I saw the flowers he pulled up. He dropped them when he ran. Can a spirit do that? You've got to believe me. I saw him. I do believe you. But you mustn't tell our grandparents about what happened today. You weren't even supposed to be out here. But if they knew... They'd only think you were dreaming it all. Let me think about it. We'll come up with a plan. Agreed? Agreed. Good evening, Grandfather. Grandfather? What's wrong? Oh, there you are, dear. What is it? You know, we don't own this house. Well, the landlord says he got a letter today from some wealthy people overseas who wants a place to summer in. A gold mine, he called it. Where will you go? Inland, I suppose. There's nothing available here. Oh, it was bad enough your grandfather having to come in off the island, but to take him away from the sea. I'm fearing his spirits will fail him. They can't do that. It isn't fair. It's the times, darling. After a war, people is always ready to cut off the past and go forward. We're just the ones left behind us all. Oh. That's not your worry, Fiona, darling. Your shoulders is too narrow to be carrying all of that. It's not lifting at all. The mackerel won't see us coming, then. It's not fish I'm talking about. We can't take this wee one out, with dirty weather coming up. Oh, it'll clear, you'll see. So you're an expert now, are you? I'm sorry, but your grandmother would never forgive me if you took a chill. You see nape of grey water in a day like this anyway. It's for the best. And be careful now, climbing up to the house. Wait, your sandwiches! Grandfather? Eamon? Is that you? Jax, I can't see you. Jax, is that you? Are you still there? Hello, is anybody out there? What's 
happening? Where are we going?
always run from me. Almighty Fiona, who worried sick about you? I sat in the boat and I broke free. A sea just came from out of the fog. And I looked and looked, but he wasn't there. There's smoke in the chimney and Jamie was inside. Having tea with a little seal. But then they ran away. She's gone crazy with some kind of fever. I'm not sick. Well, how did you get out here then and slow this time? In the boat. It drifted. There's no oars in it, Grandfather. And look at this. He set a table inside, with shells and all. You can see it. Someone playing tricks on us, and it might be you. I don't lie. I believe her, Grandfather. It's the madness that runs in the family. He's in the cradle, and there's always scenes about. That's from talking to that tig, isn't it? He put all this into your head. But, Grandfather... Not another word now. Then get in that car. And I need silence. Think up some likely excuse for your grandmother. Seals indeed. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning. Where's grandfather? Hmm? He's already into the pub this morning. And he'd be less likely to come out, as it was a black mood he left with. I gave him hard with my tongue for taking you out yesterday. Nothing bad happened. Do you know if him's going out in the motorboat today? Well, it doesn't matter whether he is or not. You're not going with him. There's no need of the bleak ocean for catching a dose of fresh air, darling. One day ashore won't kill you now, will it? No, ma'am. So have you seen him? Why does he run from me? Where do you choose him? It's my brother. He's lost out there. Uh, he isn't lost at all. He's just with another branch of the family. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know whether to believe you or not. People say you're daft. Uh, they have their reason. Have you ever seen him? Have you ever seen Jimmy? Well, I may be daft, girl. 
But I'm not blind. Fishman's Bend. Right. Got to get them to move back. I don't see how. They're going to lose their house here. Nobody's been in the island for years. It's derelict with weeds. The cottages has fallen to ruin. Oh, line. The cottages aren't so bad. I've been in them all. And didn't you say you planned to move back yourself? Well, I'm a man. What's to stop you now? Grandmother will be the hard nugget. She worries awful about our grandfather's health. Carrick Bend. She'd move back with Jamie, though. The minute she would. But them that's caring for him won't let him back till they see we've returned. I'm sure of it. You've been speaking with the seals, have you? Eamon, we can start with the cottages, fixing them up. What do you think? I'll meet you here with Kenny Minion's boat in the morning. I'll say we're off digging clams. Pull this for a deal. Riley's not. Losing half a day in the chase. Come on then.
instead of tipping the waves and all spilled out. Do you think that's what happened? Not for a moment. And how did the muscle gathering go today? Oh, we worked wonders with them, didn't we, Fiona? It was hard work. You be careful not to overtax yourself. Oh, no, it's never so good for me. Look at my muscles. Well, it's improved your appetite anyway. You came in here as though the hunger of the world was on you. <laughs> We should plant some things up here. When we move back, there'll be time. We'd better start back, Fiona. The tide won't wait.
answer. Your mother is a... Where did she come from? Since your father told you that. He doesn't like to speak of her. She came from Bally Buffet back in the mainland. Traveling the hills in search of a meal and a place to sleep. They was poor. Her father with no livelihood, only his day's pay. Seldom he had even that. Well, they say the only true wealth is land. Like we own in Ron Ennish. For all the good it does us. Not quiet, Hugh. Jimmy, your father, was my youngest and the dearest to me heart. Oh, but he was an airy boy. Bone lazy at times, and at others you'd never find a worker as keen as him. Like night and day was, depending on the mood that struck him. Can put a wise head on a young body. She was in Donegal town one day for the pilgrimage on St. Bridget's Day, which was her name, Saint. Sixteen years of age. Beautiful, strong Christian girl. Oh, sun or stars never shone on a better one. I loved her like a daughter. Our Bridget. My father was there. We had a brilliant run on the mackerel that year. Great patch of them, shoaling up behind the island. And our men were barely able to dip their nets in the water fast enough. Your father and Matt Morgan had gone off to the mainland to try and sell what they'd left over. The first time he laid eyes on Bridget, she was leaving the church. And he was struck speechless with the sight of her. It was the shyness of an island boy. And she wasn't a worldly girl at all. But to Jimmy, any place off a row in Inish might have been Paris, France. <laughs> so there he is, making honey in his heart of her good looks. And meanwhile, she's just as struck, with him a big, handsome, powerful lad, with eyes that melted all the girls. And she's in a hundred pieces, wondering what she could do to meet him. Did he speak to her? What did he say? Would you like to buy some fish, miss? <laughs> <laughs> and she said she'd love to. As she'd never tasted fish from the salty ocean in all her life. But she hadn't a shilling to her name to buy it with. They fell into talking then. Great with each other immediately, as happens with the young. Remember the day she came, sitting in the back of the car. And I says to Tess, will you look at the prize Matt Moggins brought back from Donegal? No, she says. For look at how Matt's got his eyes straight ahead at the island. And it's our Jimmy is own. So he won't let her out of his sight. From that day, Jim had the name of a steady husband and a hard worker. As fine as any that ever broke bread. She grew to love the island, our Bridget. She was the last one to marry on her own Inish. And the last one to die in it. He always blamed himself. Bringing her into the life of the sea. But life can be hard in the mainland, too. <sighs> Your hands is getting rough. It's the pulling muscles that does it. Look at them claws, will you? Got them for a right blow tonight. Got to be hell's own fury for any creature caught without shelter. I hope Jimmy comes in. What's that you're saying? I said I hope Jimmy comes in. Out of the storm. What can you mean by that? I've seen him, Grandmother. Ah, she just dreamed him up. Sleeping one day in her own inish. A wish can be a powerful thing. I saw him. Once on a hillside picking flowers. And once in the cottage having tea with a seal. Yeah. I'm not imagining it. I've seen him. He was without a stitch, and then he nipped away in his little cradle boat. It's the seals that's been looking after him. The seals, is it? It's the truth, Grandmother. Well, it is. There's a box of biscuits up there on the shelf. You get it down for me, love. Cats. Oh, and Fiona, put the chickens in their coop like a good girl, will you? Is she all right? 
What's that you got there? Well, you don't want to sleep out there on the cold ground now, do you? Did you look at that sky? I can read a sky as well as you. There's a storm coming, and it's no weather to be leaving a small boy outside in. I knew he wasn't gone from us. Holy Mother, I felt it all along. Now hurry on, will you? I'll get the lantern. They say the Keneally's is the bad one. Those are wrecks without a dose in the seawater. Now, what are you staring at now? Shoot. Now, where's that Fiona got to? I need her to help gather seaweed for soup. Pass. You look at that, Don. as only the women of Roan Inish knows how to make. She learned it from my mother. Lord be good to her. Who got it from hers? Who got it from hers before that again? All the way back to the first Connellys. They learned it from the dark woman, from Nula. There's some as tells it like that, yes. If you're out in dirty weather, it's like the lifeblood flowing back into your veins. It's part of the... like bone of a whale. Jimmy brought it in. Yeah. You young ones did a great job in this touching. And it'll have its test in a few minutes. It's a sight wind, Grandfather. Aye. They are often the most fierce. Man. Jamie, poor little soul. Jamie boy.
stay here now. Thank you. Love his little heart. He's hungry. Why did you live right there? Would you cheat? I wouldn't think you could ask you, Fiona. I'd teach you to talk. And I'll tell you stories. And your friends that have been looking after you can see you any time they like. It's Fiona's to thank for finding you, Jamie boy. She gave me her word. I just wouldn't believe it. But when you look at us, back in Rowan Inish. It's like breathing fresh air after being three years on the ground. Do you remember me, Jimmy? Your sister Fiona? Fiona? I was destroyed with the excitement. At least you'll sleep warm tonight. Ah, in Oh, this Smell for a 